This morning, we are taking you to Iceland, to Reykjavik, to meet some extraordinary women, one of whom is our next guest. Eliza Reid is the First Lady of Iceland. She's also Canadian born and raised. For the past 12 years, Iceland has ranked number one on the list of countries closing the gap in equality between men and women. But how? How is this happening? How is this how are they doing that? That's something Reed is exploring in her new book through the lens of some remarkable women. Well, speaking of, Eliza Reed is joining us this morning from Reykjavik. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you too, Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so you may have to help me with this word. All right, so the book yeah. is called Secrets of the Sprakar. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, or Sprakar, yeah. Sprakar, okay. It's an ancient mm -hmm. Icelandic word. So let's start with the basic definition. What does it mean? Yeah, it's a it's an Icelandic word that means outstanding women. Mm. And one of the reasons I love it is because it only applies to women. And if we think about English and words that just describe women, it's very hard to think of positive words. And this is a really positive word. So what was it like when you found that word? I was very excited and not least because it's such an obscure word that my husband, the president, had never heard of it before. So mm. I lorded that over him a little bit. I want to dive in a little bit. We will get into gender equality in just a second, but one of the first things yeah. I learned from your book and something you learned firsthand is apparently in Iceland, it's considered bad luck to start a new job on a Monday. How come? That's right. I, it's a really good question. I'm not quite sure why the reason is, but it's something that people really do. So when I started my first job and people said, come in on Tuesday, and I thought that was a little unusual, but of course I, I didn't want to question it. And then mm -hmm. I realized it's a, it's a thing. You should never start something new on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Or how about like work on a Monday in general? <laughs> work on a Monday is fine. Yeah. Work on a Monday yeah. is fine. For this book, you spoke with dozens of women, and one of them is the woman who made headlines for breastfeeding her baby in Parliament. This, as we know, garnered international attention. What did you learn from speaking with her? One of the most things that I found really interesting, this is this uh, former parliamentarian, who, as you can see there on the screen, was nursing her baby in Parliament. And she said, of course, this is, you know, of course, you're going to feed your baby if it's hungry, whether that is, is uh, nursing it or giving it a sandwich if it needs it. And she was a little bit surprised at how much attention that garnered. Mm -hmm. But I spoke with her a lot about something that I think many, many women can relate to, which is this sort of balance of responsibilities that we have at home, double standards really in terms of expectations for us, and, and that balancing of work and family life and, and what I call the mental load that so many women still have. So that even though we are better now at maybe saying, oh, well, as a heterosexual couple, we split the chores a lot, it very disproportionately still tends to be the women who are saying, now we have to remember to buy the birthday present, and we have to remember that he's got That's soccer right. practice tomorrow, yeah. and we have to remember to unload the dishwasher, and all of that mental load takes a lot of time and energy. Absolutely, I can attest to that as well. I mean, Iceland has the <laughs> highest level of female participation in the workforce. There's a female chief of police, a female bishop of the national church. You say the parental leave program is one of the cornerstones of this forward approach to equality. So talk to me a little bit about that. So what does parental leave look like? Absolutely. So parental leave is paid by the government through a program that everybody pays into rather than being paid by the individual employers. And if you're self-employed, you know, but you're paying taxes, you're also eligible for it. And when I was having children, it was uh, three months for the for one parent, three months for another parent, and then a third three months that either parent could use. And that's now been extended actually to 12 months in total. The idea being that the responsibility wasn't just on, say, a mother in a heterosexual relationship to be taking all of the parental leave, but that fathers should also be stepping up and doing it. And once that program was introduced, a lot of fathers started taking their rights to do it, which mm. built in strong bonds with their children that last, of course, well after the children have gone to school and the parents are both working full time again. So I think it's a it's a wonderful program. And certainly my husband and I had four children in just under six years and Whoa. we made maximum use of those policies. <laughs> Good for you. Hats off to you. And, you know, I, I think about Canada and how we sort of exist in our structures here. What do you think Canada could or should be doing to make greater strides when it comes to gender equality? I think, you know, it's certainly not my place to talk about, say, governmental policies or, or what people should be deciding to introduce. I can only speak to my own experience of, of how much that helped me as, as a young parent. Mm -hmm. But I think, broadly speaking, it's a sort of tolerance and understanding for the fact that, say, that, you know, the children that we're having is benefiting 
society as a whole. And it's really a, a societal sense of that work-life balance, you know, that it's normal or it should be normal for a male vice president of a company to say, look, I'm not going to be in until noon today because my son has a ballet recital. And that should mm. be completely normal. And I think something that maybe in Canada we could work on as well is, is not judging people in a negative way for that, but really uh, in, encouraging that because good work-life balance is, is going to help all mm -hmm. of us in, in all facets of society. That's a great place to leave on. Eliza Reed, thank you so much. The book is called Secrets of the Sprakar. Thanks. Eliza, thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.